Well, hello there, and how are you doing? Oh, you are! I am so delighted to hear it. Well, here I am. I'm in the start of my 29th week of lockdown. And if that wasn't bad enough, being in quarantine and lockdown, outside it's chucking it down with rain. And it's a cold rain too, which means winter is not far off not far off at all. So joyful to look at, isn't it? <laughs> well, anyway, to the question at hand, you're probably wondering what these things are doing here. Well, this is my flight two. It used to be flight one, the main computer, but now it's going to be flight two because it has a slightly slower processor than the other one. This is only a 3.3 and the other one is a 3.6. So I'm making this one my second computer and the one that will run eventually the external view. That way I can get rid of all of those low frame rates that everybody tells me about. I am planning on doing it. It will, it will happen, believe me. Well, flush with the success of the other one, this one I also took to pieces. I mean, all the way to pieces. And then reassembled it. I put in the 850 watt power supply. <coughs> I have the two solid state drives. I also have the M2 drive right here. As before, the smaller of the two solid state drives that will hold the operating system and the Opus FSI software. The other one, the larger SSD, that will hold the redirected files from the user folder on drive C. That's because in the My Documents folder in particular, uh, when P3D installs, it puts a whole lot of temporary files in there and also all the add-on data is in there and there's a lot of scenery in there too. So if I can keep the function separate, I'm hoping that this will end up in a smoother and faster computer. And then of course the this one that will be drive E, that's the M2. It's supposed to be the fastest one on the motherboard. I only have one M2 plug on this board and with that being the fastest I have a one terabyte chip in that which will hold all of the P3D and the SIM software. So hopefully we'll get everything running nice and fast on that. But with this one, I don't have to load PMDG. I just have to load P3D and any of the airport sceneries that I'm going to be using. That has to mirror the other computer. That's how it works. In order that I get the external view to match what the simulator is doing, I have to have the same stuff on both. But I don't have to have PMDG because that only needs to go on the one that is running the simulator itself. More on that a little bit later on. Right. Well, I suppose I put, should put the bits and pieces in and find out if it works, shall we? Now, as an aside, down at the bottom right, as on the other motherboard too, there are a number of switches. Each of those switches has a function and will tell the motherboard that it has certain features enabled. The one on the far left, that one activates SLI. That's where you can join two or three graphic cards together. 
I have that disabled because there'll only be one graphic card going in here. And the other three have to do with overclocking and voltage regulation. So if I activate them, then it will allow more voltage to go to the various component parts, which will then allow me to do overclocking. Now the downside of overclocking a computer, as many of you know, perhaps some of you have found out to your peril, that when you overclock, that basically increases the voltage to an electronic part. Increasing the voltage increases the heat. Increasing the heat reduces the life of the component part. Some people have really cranked up the voltage and they've had six months of wonderful performance and then poof, it's all gone up in smoke. So I've got everything set to default in this because we'll, we'll start out with that and see how the performance is first and then if I need to, I can always increase it. I would rather do it that way than start out with high voltage and then have to reduce it later. The other thing I will be doing with this is I will be disabling some of the features on the motherboard that are not going to be needed. I have two LANs on the back, uh, two LAN ports. There's LAN 1 and LAN 2. Since I'll only be using one, I'm going to disable LAN 2. So that's the first resource I can then free up for the system to use. I'll be not using uh, Wi-Fi, so I'll be disabling the Wi-Fi. I'm also going to be disabling the Bluetooth. So those three things are resources that the motherboard can then allocate to other functions. If you see what I'm, where I'm going with this, it just means that the computer will run a little bit faster and a little bit better. All right, now let's see if we can get this thing together and, and get it to work. Are you ready? Okay, let's go for it. All right, here's the graphic card and we'll plug that in. There it goes. Here's the HDMI. So we'll plug that in. The power socket is in. Here's the mouse and keyboard. We'll put those in here in the back. And this is the USB holding Windows 10 Professional 64-bit. So I'll put that in the back also. And let's see. Oh yes, we better put some power to the graphic card, hadn't we? So we better plug that in. And it's plugged in onto the power supply. So everything is connected. The satters are in there, the power is in there. These blue wires, by the way, are to feed external USB 3s on the front panel. So they look a little unsightly, but that's what they're for. Right, now that we've got that, shall we see if it works? Lay your bets, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> what price shall you give me today? Oh, you're not going to give me any odds? That's because I had a success the other day and you lost heavily? Ha! <laughs> oh, well, never mind. You may be surprised. Who knows? Let's see what it does, shall we? All right, the power is on and... Here we go. We've got power to the monitor. There's lights, there's lights, there's flashing, there's numbers flashing, there's blue lights flashing, lots of flashing things in this. And 
as soon as I get a light on this, if it lights up, then I'll push F2, there it goes. Look at that. Ah! Yes! There we go, we're right into the BIOS. Ha ha! We have success, we have liftoff. Houston, no problem at all. You can all go home and have the weekend off. Brilliant. Okay, we are all set. Now, the next stage will be to put it on the bench. After I close everything up, I'm going to have to tidy all the wires up, tie them back, make sure that they're all in secure position. You know, be tidy. Yeah. And then I'm going to move it over to that station, which is behind the camera here. And that is where I'm going to load the operating system. So I'll be putting Windows 10 in and then loading in all the P3D and everything else. Well, here it is. This is Flight 2. And it's all buttoned up, all the wires are nice and tight in it. So we're going to fire it up and install Windows on it. And I'm going to use this big television back here for the monitor so you can see what happens. So here we go. We'll push the button. This is exciting. As soon as this lights up, I'm going to push F2 to go into the BIOS. Here we go. Because I want to make sure that I'm starting it on the USB with the Windows system. So, I'm going to go to boot menu F8. And here you can see UEFI Jet Flash Transcend 32 gigabytes. That's what I'm going to be using to install. So I'll press enter on that. Then it reboots and starts the operating system and the installation procedure from the USB. At least that's what it's supposed to do. Oh! Oh, we've got the spinning thing, so that's a good sign. <clears throat> Here we go. And we've got next, install. Don't have a product key because it's already digitally install let's see then go Windows 10 Pro next accept all the license terms which if you've ever read it by the way it means that you're going to give Microsoft your firstborn child I think <laughs> and if you can see here we've got drive zero unallocated space 476 gigabytes and then drive one and then drive two drive Drive 2 in this case, of course, is the M2 drive. We couldn't see it on the BIOS screen, but it can be seen on the installation screen. So for those of you who wanted to use an M2 to boot from, this is also the best way to do it. So I'm going to be installing this on the smaller drive, which will be C. Go next. And... Now it's a case of sitting back and just letting it do its thing. Now a couple of things. During the procedure it's going to ask for permissions to do all sorts of things. I always deny those permissions because that's going to mean that the computer is constantly going out to the internet and coming back going out, coming back, sending information, receiving information. And if you do that, well, then it's busy processing Microsoft and not busy processing your simulator. So we'll disable all of those as we go in. 
Good. Now I'm going to select United Kingdom. That's where I'm at. I'm accepting the United Kingdom keyboard. I'm skipping any additional ones. I'm going to be setting this up for personal use. I'm not going to add an account that is going to use OneDrive and constantly go out and update and everything else. So I'm going to use down here the offline account. It says limited experience, which is fine. Now, the name that we'll give to this account on this computer is going to be 737 Simulator. By the way, that's also what I'm going to be calling the other computer. The account will be the same, so it'll recognize each other. No password. I don't want to use online speech because that takes up resources. I don't want to get location based stuff because that takes up resources. I don't want to find my device because that takes up resources. And if there is a crash, I only want to send basic instead of full. I don't want to use my data to improve language recognition. No, I don't want the ads to be more, I want them to be generic, I don't care. No, I don't want to use Microsoft's advertising ID. These are all things that Microsoft are using to get inside your computer and go back and forth and learn a lot about you. So, so no for this one. No, I don't want Cortana. There we go. Here we are. We have the desktop. We have success. We have installed Windows 10. Now, it wants to reboot, so we'll go ahead and restart. And what it is, 737 Simulator. Now, the next thing I need to do is I need to initialize the two additional drives. And here's the reason why. As you can see, it's only found one drive, so I have to put the other two on. I'm going to go up here, right click, left click on manage. Let the snap up, there we go. I'm going to go to disk management. I'm going to say OK to that. Now I'm going to do a new simple volume for D drive, there we go assigned it to D, get rid of the name that says new volume, and good, and we've got D in, and now we'll do E. Do exactly the same thing. Okay, now here's D and there's E. And that's how you get all three drives. This is the SSD, the one, th uh, the one terabyte, and this is the M2 drive. Right. Now it's going to be a, a matter of cleaning up. So we're going to, I'm going to put large icons on there. I like large icons. 
I'm going to get rid of the auto play, date and time, device manager, devices and printer, file explorer options. I like a single click. I don't want to show them in that, but I do want it to be this PC up here. And then here I want hidden folders to be shown and take off those. And I want to restore the previous folder that was at logon. Apply. OK. Now I'm at single click. Keyboard, mouse. I want to go into pointers. Standard, extra large. Enable the shadow. Why not? And go on that. Now the arrow is a little bit bigger and easier to see. Uh, internet options, forget all of that. Networking and sharing center. Now that is important. First of all, it's going to come up and say it's a public network. So I'm going to go in here, go to settings, go to networks, go to properties. I'm going to make it private, close it, and now it's a private network. Here is where to do a sharing across multiple computers, this is where I have to make some changes. So, in the advanced, I'm going to turn on file and printer sharing. I'm also going to turn it on for guest and public. I'm going to turn off password protected sharing and I'm going to Turn on sharing so anyone with network access can read and access. So, that way anybody with access to my network can get onto this. And I've got that in. Power options. Another very important one. High performance. Change the plans. Do not ever turn off the display. Do not put the computer to sleep. And when it comes to putting the hard drive drives to sleep, we change that to never. Save the changes and there we go. Choose what the power buttons do. When I press the power buttons, it shuts down. When I press the sleep button, I don't want it to do anything. So we'll save those changes. And sound sync center system. In the system, I'm going to change the computer name, change it, and the computer name is going to be Flight 2. And the work group that I have is right there and put that in. Welcome to the group. OK. Close. Restart later. And then I'm going to go to user accounts. Change the account control setting and slide it all the way down to the bottom. Do OK. Close. Now I'm going to reboot and when I reboot I will be on the workgroup network and all those settings will come into play. Now the question has been asked, how do you redirect the folders from drive C to drive D? This is how you do it. You open up you go to Drive C, you go to Users, you go to whatever you named your computer as you opened it up. Well, remember we named this one 737 Simulator. And here are all of the folders. Now, I'm going to go to, I'll start out with Contacts because I'm going to do all of these. 
So I'll right click on contacts, left click on properties and up here there's a tab that says location. Click on that. Backspace where it says C colon backslash users and put in a D colon. And when you click OK, it'll say you want to create it. Yes, yes, you want to transfer the files. And there it's gone. And over here, look, there's its created 737 simulator and inside a contacts. And you will do that for each of those folders in there that are important to transfer. So I would recommend, I would recommend these. Desktop, documents, downloads, favorites, links, music, pictures, saved games, searches and videos. I would not try to transfer the OneDrive or the 3D objects or any of the others and of course the contacts which we did first. Just do those main ones and that way when P3D installs its files it will use everything that is on D drive to write and read to and not take up the resources of C drive. Well, there you are. That's how you get the installation going. That's how you install Windows. It's how you transfer the files, the, the user files from one drive to another. And it takes a lot of time when you're then doing the updates and installing. That goes on for hours. Uh, that's the slow bit. Installing, as you see, didn't take all that long. You just have to remember to put the tick marks in where you need to, make the proper selections as you're going along, and then everything will run smoothly later on. I, of course, made the choice to open up my entire system um, to everyone because well, I'm going to be using Opus FSI. And it's important that all the computers on that linkage can talk to one another and write files to and from all the, all the different computer drives. So, if you're not going to use Opus FSI or anything like it, then you don't have to worry about that. But if you are, then that's one of the things that you will need to do in order to ensure a smooth um, connection between the two and a sharing of all the resources between two computers, which of course is what I'm after doing. So, look after yourselves and I'll get back with you with all the latest as soon as I'm ready to do it. Now, what do I do with all the screws I have left? Oh well, I've always been a few screws loose anyway, so what the hell? <laughs> See you.